what is orienteering? A number of schools in Glasgow this term have been doing orienteering. I know a number of my colleagues, active schools, have been taking sessions and showing boys and girls how to use a map and how to find clues around their school. So we thought it'd be helpful to do a little video on a little bit more about what is orienteering. Orienteering involves finding your way on a course using a map and compass. Competitors have to find their way from checkpoint to checkpoint called controls in the shortest possible time. So they must decide on the best route without getting lost. I'd like you to watch this short clip and I want you to look out for what equipment you can see that you need to do orienteering. You may want to pause this video now and have a discussion about the equipment that you saw in that video clip. Hopefully you picked out various things there. We saw some good shoes that you need to be able to run on trails and in forests. You saw a map, you saw a compass, you saw a thing called a dibber, and you also saw a control that they have to find. This next video is two boys who are keen orienteers, uh, Alexander and his brother Edward. And they're going to just show you what you need and what the equipment is for orienteering. So watch carefully and you'll find out a little bit more about how it works. Before you orienteer, you need the right equipment. First, you need a control description holder. Control descriptions go in this holder and they tell you where you've got to go next and what your controls on. Next you need a dibber. This is an electronic device that records your time and proves you went to the control. This you put in an electronic box and it beeps. Then it records your information. You will need a compass to tell you which direction you have to head in. And finally of course, when you go to the event, you'll have to get yourself a map to tell you the exact place you have to head for. Now you're ready to do orienteering. So if you do a proper orienteering event, those are the equipment that you will need and that you'll be given to be able to take part in the event. Now the most important thing in orienteering is a map. If you do a cross country race or any running race that just involves following a course, you don't need a map because the organizers tell you where to go. But orienteering, what makes it so fun is that you have to decide the route and so you have a map. And there's a number of maps that have been made of our schools in Glasgow by Blair Vaddock. And here's a couple of examples of a couple of the schools that I work in. So this one is Cruxton Castle and you can see here it's a great map colour and you can see where the pitch is, the school is in black, all the fences are all marked and it's really helpful to be able to do a little fun event at the school. And the next one is Sandwood Primary School. Again, this is one of the schools that I work in and it's great to be able to set up a course. They've got plenty of grass around the school. They've got a mugger, they've got a pitch. So I can put controls all over the school so that the boys and girls have great fun trying to find them and we can have an event. This next little video is uh, how to understand a map and what the different things mean. So look out and try and see if you can listen and, and spot what the water is, what paths are, what contours are, and it will give you a little bit of an idea of how a map is put together. OK, let's have a look at an orienteering map. Brown symbols on the map show the shape of the ground and contour lines join points of equal height. Water features in blue include streams, ponds and marshes, for example. Paths, rocks and man-made features, such as statues, are shown in black. Colours are used to show different vegetation, with yellow showing open land, white being open woodland or forest, and different shades of green showing thicker forest. The maps all have north lines drawn to magnetic north, that's the same north as on a compass. North is always at the top of the map, and maps are always drawn to scale and have a scale bar on as well. Maps usually have a legend, which tells you what the different symbols mean. So we've seen equipment, what we need, we've seen the importance of the map. So let's have a little watch of this video of how it all comes together. 
So let's go back to Alexander and his brother Edward and they're going to show you how an event works and how they use their map and their dibber to find the controls and find their way around the course. This one, this video lasts a little bit longer but I hope you enjoy it because it gives a real sense of how it all works. First you must dib the clear box. This clears your dibber from all other information that might be on it. Next go to the checkbox. This checks that you've cleared your dibber. Let's follow Ed around his course. Here he goes. He's dibbed the start and off he goes. He's He's Before you orienteer, you need to look at your map. First, get the compass round the right way. The red arrow on the compass must be pointing the arrows at the top of the map. That's better. Now we got to look for the start flag. The start is the red triangle. There, found it? Okay, right. These black lines are paths. To get to Edward's first control, he needs to follow some paths. Off he goes. Go! approaching his first control. So let's check the number on his control descriptions to check it's right. It's number one and it's 75 post. So what's the... yep it is 75 and yes it is on a post so it must be the right control. Now Edward will dib it and it's time to look at your map again to find number two. Now put the map the right way and here we go. To get to number two, we have to follow this path. So, following the path. Now, Edward's arrived at his control, but is it the right one? We need to check. Number two, it's 95 and it's the northwest path junction. So, 95, yes, the control is 95, so it must be the right control. Edward has dibbed it. Now, to get to number three, we need to follow this long path. So... That was quick to get to that control. But is it the right control? Let's check. Number three is 66 on a post. But this control isn't on a post, it's 67. It's on a bench. That can't be the right control. No. So Edward runs on. And here it is. Is this it? Yes, Edward's found that it is. He's dibbed it. Edward continued his course and finally he's got to get to the finish. The finish is represented by a symbol that's two circles on top of each other. And here he goes. Yes, he's done it. He's reached the finish. And that's your basics of orienteering. Well, I really hope that this video has given you an idea about what is orienteering and how it works. And hopefully it's given you a, an idea that maybe you would like to take part in orienteering. There are clubs around. To find the club, go to scottish-orienteering.org and click on find your local club and you can scroll down and find local clubs from there. The other thing you can do is to use that same site, uh, scottish-orienteering.org, press on permanent courses and then you can find courses and if you scroll down, there's loads and loads of permanent courses in parks. For example, you could go to Pollock Park and they've got three or four courses there that are set up. So here's a map that you can download and then you could have a go with your parents and see if you could find the different controls. So that's something you can have a go at if you wanted to. Just going to finish with a final video and this is just again just a, a few top British orienteers talking about why they love this sport so much. Orienteering is a fantastic sport, a great adventure and I really enjoy it. You can play to your strengths. I think it's just really about committing to the route, choosing one and then going for it. If you can keep your direction 
through the terrain, moving as fast as possible and keeping the orienteering as simple as you can, then ultimately, then you've got the potential to win the race. So go out and have fun. Thanks for watching this video on what is orienteering and look out because there will be more videos coming soon.